of course I've got to put a bit of a nose radius on that but I'll probably just do that with my all stone and uh, yeah I'm quite satisfied with that Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Great news, I've finally finished that tool post for my little tool and cutter grinder. And guess what? I've successfully had my first grind. Without further ado, let's head on over to the tool and cutter grinder and I'm really proud of this and um, it's gonna make my job much easier. Instead of sanding there trying to, you know, grind off hand, now I can put it in the machine and get a nice ground finish. All right, let's head on over and I'll take you over for a look. So here's my tool post for my tool and cutter grinder and it's finally finished. Um, the reason I made this was because I, it did not come with it. It's a second hand machine when I bought it. Missing quite a few attachment, but that's okay. I got it for a great price. So my tool post was made out of scrap, okay, which was given to me by my neighbor, Gavin, next door. All right, and these were all rusty and horrible. Looked like they'd been laying in a paddock, but who cares, it's free. So I've designed it that it will pivot in all different axes, okay? So first of all, this was the attachment that came with it. So of course, it's all um, imperial. So this is all half inch 13, which is UNC, okay? And a three quarter spinner fits it. And I can rotate this around that plane. I'll lock that up. Okay, if I crack it over this side here, okay, I can rotate it around this plane here. All right, and I'll lock that up there vertically. Now, I've scalloped out a pocket here, which I'll show you in the build video. And if that will rotate without hitting the stone, you can see the large pocket that I've milled out of here, and that allows me to rotate it on the platform here as well. Now, I grooved out the bottom here, and I've got to make some new toe clamps, but that's okay. Um, a bit more lower profile that will clamp that down. But the base of this is also dished out on the bottom. The base also works on the magnetic table, all right? So that was an added bonus. Okay, let's jump into the build video, and what I'll do first, I'll show you the making of the posts and then the base, all right? Let's go. So here's my round object here. I'm gonna mill eight millimeters on the sides to get it down to square. And I roughly want a 60 by 60 square. And then I'll bore it so this attaches on the side. Okay, that way and a bolt will come through this way. The base of this plate, I'm gonna use this circular bit here and I'm, I'm going to do my turning operations first. I'm going to face this side and bring this external ball down to about 40 millimeters, and that'll make it easier later on instead of putting it all back in a four jaw. I'm going to quickly uh, parallel turn this OD here. Now I'm glad I parallel turned that OD. It's now running true. If I just spin it up slowly, you'll see it's not too bad. So. I'm going to finish the facing on this side and I might just auto feed and reverse to clean that up. Now 
what you've got to watch for here is when you've got your chuck open that far, let's have a look. Those little suckers are going to grab you, so be very careful. Rough enough for my work in the mill. Let's go. I've just finished up the block in the milling machine and um, I'm quite happy with it. I had to redo my drawing. Um, what had happened, I actually stuffed up. This drawing here was out, so I'd accidentally done 50 mil here instead of 60. So this is the more correct representation. So I'm shooting for 60 millimeters for the outside and we'll throw the, the old Mitoteos on and we're gonna have a look here. So I'm quite happy with that. It's that side. And that side as well. I think I open them up a little bit, give me a sec. Pull them off again. So really, really happy with that. Just finished boring that. Um, I probably won't use this top hole, however, let's just see if it fits. Yep, beautiful. Okay, so that will give me another option later. If, I'll probably just 3D print a bung to go in there for now, but if I ever want to use that, I can on the top. All right, right I've got the old dead center up the live center trick, and I've clocked this up in the four jaw. It's not perfect, but it's close enough for what I want to do. So I'll just spin that gently. You can see the needle just bouncing around a little bit here. That's uh, good enough for me anyway. Got to remember, I just marked this, uh, you know, and center popped it. So it's close enough for what, I'm, what I want to do. Right, oh, I'm going to run a pilot hole through this first and then a half inch drill bit and then I'll do some boring. the block the solid block in the back in the mill 
and I'm going to pocket out this hole here so I can get a half inch nut in and be able to tighten it up. All right. Now it's going to be a bit of a challenge because I've got to go quite deep. I'll try to rough most of it out with this carbide end mill but I may have to pop in with a bigger high speed steel one later but it will give me a bigger radius in the corner. I've decided that this isn't going to be high enough, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to add this block on as well, all right? So I'll turn that in the lathe, and then uh, this will go on top of that as well, and that will give me a bit more center height for the grinder. going to do here I'm going to relieve it I'm going to come in about half an inch and then relieve the material from here and this is an old trick my old buddy Pete taught me and he said you do that so it sits nicely on a flat surface all right so I'll just mark that half inch and I know you shouldn't use verniers as a scriber but anyway they're really old so I don't care so there's my half inch right there Roughly, this doesn't have to be too critical. Just the inside of that, I'll start the lathe up. And we've just um, dished that out there, so scallop that middle piece out so it'll sit down flush. Happy with that? Uh, we'll try and tap that now. Okay, I've already drilled my hole the other day. I've got my half inch UNC tap here, which is 13 TPI, so that's 13 threads per inch. I like to use this hangster for stuff here, and that's an American company and uh, supplied by Live Tools. And this was a sample bottle donated to me by Live Tools, so I didn't buy it. Um, I like to use a good squeeze of this, of this stuff. I find it works really well. Now I'm going to power tap this, even though this isn't a tap designed for power tapping. I'll leave my tailstock sliding or floating, and away we go. Let's just say if we tap OK here. All right, I'll back that off. Go in again. it off and again now I've got to be honest I'm not too confident in this tap um, never heard of this company before but it's made in the EU so it should be okay but it's a carbon tap and uh, I would prefer to use high speed steel but anyway what I've done I've got the tap wrench on it that Maddie gave me from Maddie's workshop and I've just uh, got the lathe in neutral, lathe turned off of course and just gently pulling on the chuck and I can feel that I can feel deflection in that and I'm not happy I reckon if I pull too hard I'll snap the bastard yeah the prick of a thing I can't even get half a turn on that I'm 
I'm not going to force it. I'll just take my time. Just sneak up on it. I can actually feel that tap, I reckon, like deflecting, like going through elastic behaviour. Alright, I'll come back to you. So I flipped the part around in the chuck, and you've seen I've got a couple of parallels there up against the face of the chuck. I've tapped that real softly with a soft face mallet, and my parallels are tight, so hopefully that should be tracking true and not wobbling. Anyway, time will tell. Just got to remember to take the parallels out, otherwise you get hit in the head like a shotgun. Now I'm going to taper that back this way till I get to a diameter of about 76. So what I'm doing now, I'm boring out uh, the internal section here. It needs to be a quarter inch deep and 40 mil diameter, all right? To accept this boss. So we're nearly there, we're not far off. Really close to the jaw there, but I should be right if I'm just careful. I think I'll miss it. Famous last words, I think. Robot chubby. I'll tell you what, it's that hard you can't bend it with two hands. Who's your daddy, mama? Who's your daddy? You are big boy. You are big boy. I've got a robot chubby. It's that hard I can crack fleas on it. But anyway, I'm going to shove it right up its ass like a corn cob. Okay, if we look carefully, there's a rare person in captivity here. 